I'm Peter Boyle from KHOW Radio, and welcome again to Colorado Inside Out. We got the we got the grand old round table here. Boy, what a week it is here at Channel 12. What a week it's been for the city. First, as we always say, let us introduce our contestants. As always, she's my dear friend and my colleague from Westward, the lovely and talented Miss Patricia Calhoun. Next, a man who has not been at the table for a while, and as you know, the Busker Fest is taking place. <laughs> Last year, Eric was downtown seeing a mime hit by the light rail, turning to me and saying, "Peter, a mime is a terrible thing to waste." Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Sonderman. <laughs> you need a snare drum. <laughs> Thank you. Craig Silverman from Channel 7, also at the round table, and back after popular demand from yeah. your Denver Post. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely and talented Miss Sue O'Brien. Bilingual education could be back on the ballot in Colorado. Opponents of bilingual ed have filed a ballot proposal that would severely curb using language other than English to teach subjects in public schools. Well, the measure would force students who do not speak English to be put into English immersion classes, students whose parents then would sign a waiver could stay in bilingual ed. Now, this proposal would strike down many of the new programs now in use in DPS. Has the program had its run, and now it's time to try something different? Or is the proposal premature? Would English immersion nullify the previous lawsuits that have forced DPS to include English-only classes in the classrooms? And it, this, is a, this is complex when Craig, it's yours. First of all, when I'm not here or in court, I'm in my office listening to my partner, David Oliva, speak uh, Spanish most of the day to various clients of our law firm. It is a tremendous asset, especially here in Denver, Colorado, to be able to speak both English and Spanish. But it is a disaster to only be able to speak Spanish in this society. And people need to recognize that, including the public schools. You have, I, I like this English immersion idea. Sure, Spanish is a very valuable language if you live in Mexico. It's valuable as a second language, but it's not going to change that English is the way in the United States and to advance, to fulfill your potential, you have to be fluent in English. And to deprive children of that is really doing them more harm than good. So. I, too, am a fan of immersion. Uh, among other reasons, it works much better for all of the different immigrant groups. If you are from Thailand or Laos or Germany, an English immersion class will work for you as well for, as for a Spanish-speaking kid. The thing that worries me about the, the proposed initiative and that I don't know enough about is how inflexible it is. Because yeah. I think what DPS has done, I mean, DPS moved to an immersion philosophy four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. That was laudable and was highly controversial at the time. I think what DPS has done with the flexibility they offer and permitting bilingual for the second and third generation Hispanic mm -hmm. families who want a cultural preservation, um, as per permitting a bilingual option or bilingual charter schools, is also laudable. So I'm not willing on the ballot to lock in immersion only if that's what the how the initiative is written, and I don't know that. Patricia. Well, it's interesting with Rita Montero leading the charge here. She can, the Hispanic community gets very divided over her. They did five mm -hmm. years ago, but still, she is local. She knows the community. She, can, she at least will be able to address the issues as opposed to Stanley Utz, who brought it up in where, well, Arizona and in California. She the present DPS program. Right, so a lot of this depends on how much she pushes through the wording, how much it's locally driven as opposed to mm -hmm. being an out-of-state thing. But I think just listening to Craig and listening to Sue, I think it has a very good chance of passing here if there's some flexibility. Well said, sir. It's an issue about which I feel strongly. I'm the son of um, uh, two parents, both of whom came to this country not speaking a word of English, both of whom learned English by being immersed in it. I think the only ticket to success in this country is to learn English. Mm. I think uh, that the current bilingual education program, Peter, has a lot more to do about with politics and political statements than it does with language proficiency. Uh, and um, I, I, I support the initiative. What, what will happen with this? What do you think? 
I, I think you're seeing a consensus among diverse personalities. I had the pleasure at Colorado College of being taught uh, by Professor Sonderman, uh, Eric's father, and uh, he was an outstanding uh, teacher in English. So, you know, that's the way to get ahead. It's always been the way. It's not uh, exclusive to Spanish-speaking people. I mean, what I'm asking to you, real quick, around the table, if it's on the ballot, will it, will it, will it have support? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah, I think it has huge emo it's okay. a huge emotional support. 